Welcome to question number 10. In this question, we're shown a sketch of part of the curve with equation y equals x cubed minus 8x squared plus 20x. The curve has stationary points at A and B. And in the first part of the question, part A, we're asked to use calculus to find the x-coordinates of the points A and B. So we've got to use calculus then to find the coordinates of the points A and B. Okay, so you might like to pause the video, give it a try and see if you can find the stationary points. If you're a bit stuck on how to find uh, stationary points, you might like to take a quick look at our tutorial on this and then come back and see if you can do the question. OK, welcome back. See how you got on. Well, in this question, if we're asked to find stationary points, we would first of all need to differentiate, and then we would expect that at the stationary points, the gradient dy dx would equal 0. OK, so first of all, then, we're going to start by differentiating uh, our expression for y. So dy dx equals differentiating x cubed gives 3x squared. Differentiating minus 8x squared gives minus 16x. And differentiating with respect to x, the 20x gives plus 20. Then we would recap by saying that at stationary points, the gradient would be 0. So at stationary points, okay, stationary points, the gradient, which is really dy dx, the gradient would equal 0. So that's going to mean that therefore our quadratic 3x squared minus 16x plus 20 that's going to equal 0. We would aim to factorize this so a couple of brackets equals 0 two things at the front that multiply together to give 3x squared, that's 3x and x. Two things at the rear of the brackets that times together to give plus 20. And at the same time, when combined with the 3x and the x gives the minus 16x, that's 3x minus 10 and x minus 2. So in the usual way, we would have that each factor equals 0, so therefore 3x minus 10 equals 0, or x minus 2 would equal 0. And if we solve that, let's just scroll up a bit, we would therefore have that x would equal 10 thirds or x would equal 2. Okay, so therefore we have the x coordinates as requested. Uh, for a and b. So just to recap, I'm going to just write that therefore the x coordinate okay, of a equals 2. It's the uh, 1 to the left of b. And the x coordinate for b, the x coordinate for b. There you go. That is going to be 10 thirds. 10 thirds being 3 and 1 third. But just going to leave it as top heavy anyway. OK, so hopefully you uh, managed that. And if you did, well done. You would have got yourself four marks. OK, so we now need to move on to part B. And in part B, it asks us to find the value of d2y by dx squared. So, in other words, find the value of d2y by dx squared at a, and hence verify that a is a maximum point. OK, so again, just uh, pause the video, come back if you uh, want to check your answer, see if you've got it right. OK, so to find d2y by dx squared 
But A, what we would need to do is differentiate dy dx. Well, we have dy dx up here at the top of the page, so if we differentiate that again with respect to x, differential of 3x squared is 6x, and differential of minus 16x is minus 16. Okay, so then we would say when x is 2, when x equals 2, we need to substitute this into d2y by dx squared. Let's just scroll up again. So therefore, what we have is that d2y by dx squared equals 6 times 2 minus 16. The 6 twos are 12, and 12 minus 16 is minus 4. This is a negative number, and so it's less than 0. And this is very important because by finding the value of d2y by dx squared when x is 2, i.e. At, at the point a, if it comes out negative, then this is an indication that a is a maximum. So we would just conclude by saying, therefore, a is a maximum. Okay, so that definitely shows that I've understood why I'm finding the value of d2y by dx squared at a. So uh, hopefully you got that one right, and again, if you did, then that is worth two marks. Okay, so uh, we've got two more parts to go, so moving on to part c. Now in part C, let's just uh, go back to the uh, diagram. Okay, so we'll just scroll back. In part C, it says that the line through B parallel to the y-axis, that's that dotted line there, meets the x-axis at the point N. And the region R shown, uh, shown shaded here is bounded by the curve, the x-axis and the line from A to N, going down here. Okay, so in part C, we've got to, first of all, find the integral of the curve, the integral of x cubed minus 8x squared plus 20x. Okay, so I'll write that in for you. We'll just come back up to here. Okay, so you've got to find then the integral of x cubed, minus 8x squared plus 20x. Don't forget there's several terms there, so you need to put in brackets with respect to x. Okay, so just pause the video and give that a go. If you have problems with integration of this type, you might again like to look at our tutorial on this. Okay, so welcome back. Let's see how you got on with the integral. Okay, so this is equal to, each of the terms is in a good state for integrating, so we don't have to modify any of the terms, so we can get straight on with it. So just simply add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So we start with x cubed, adding 1 to the power becomes x to the 4, and we divide by the new power, that's 4. Minus, we have 8x squared at the moment, so we add 1 to the power, that's 8x cubed, and divide by the new power, which is 3. And finally, the 20x, again, add 1 to the power, x to the power 2, and divide by the new power, 2. Don't forget to put the constant of integration. I'm going to call it plus c here. Okay. When I look at this, what I notice is the this term here cancels, can be reduced, the 2 will to cancel into the 20, 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 20 goes 10 times. So if I just recap by writing that out neatly underneath, then it's going to be equal to x to the 4 then over 4 minus 8x cubed over 3 and then plus 10x squared. So 10x squared plus the constant of integration c.